Okay, balikan tayo. Okay, so good morning. Today's uh, discussion will be focusing on Anglo-Saxon literature. Um, this is one of the four last topics that we have. Anglo-Saxon, European, African, as well as Latin American literature. So, uh, let's head, head on towards the discussion. So, let's introduce first Anglo-American literature. So, Anglo-American also influenced Filipino literature in some other ways as well as our culture. Uh, if we're going to look around, we can see, no, even we can hear and we can speak, no, because English language come from or came from Anglo-American um, contributions. Okay, even our local architecture has been influenced by the Anglo-Americans. Thus, knowing the Anglo-American culture is also knowing a part of the Filipinos as well. So this is the reason why we uh, we are studying Anglo-American um, literature. This has been part of our discussion because um, Anglo-American literature uh, gives us a hint okay, of the history and the backgrounds of who we are okay, as Filipinos. Number two. What are the possible? Uh, what are the contributions of Anglo-Saxons or the Anglo-Americans in literature? Okay, I just found it from the internet. No, number one is heroic qualities: the bravery, the loyalty, sternness, warlike love of quality. No, um, yes. Okay, yan ang mga contributions ng Anglo-American or Anglo-Saxons. No, they are Germanic tribes. No, uh, sa kanila yan yung yung kwento nila Thor. Okay, worship ancient Germanic gods, no? Si Chu, which is the Tuesday, Woden, Wednesday, Freya, which we consider as Friday, and the word Valhalla, that defines heaven. Number three is the uh, pagan beliefs, no? Li that life was believed to be in the hands of fate, which is, the, um, which is in the hands of weird, no? Or wild, or kung ano man tabasa dyan, uh, I believe it's weird, which is the goddess of fate, no? The ruling warlords ascended from the gods and sought revenge for a threatened, for treated household cruelly, no, and as well as the runic alphabet, and there's a lot of other contributions, uh, contributions concerning Anglo-Saxons or Anglo-Americans. So these are just the few. Okay, what else? Old English Christian poetry, by contrast, is simplistic, for it's marked by innocent Christian belief. So pag sinabi nating um, Anglo-Saxon, no, this uses the old English style. If you have your Bibles with you, okay. Uh, pwede kayong mag-browse sa King James versions or yung mga old English American version no uh, you can see there the the uh, tag dito yung yung kaibahan nung old English style of writing sa modern English type of writing okay there are two names that are prominent during the period so when we're talking about old English Christian poetry okay we'll just be focusing on two first is this one Sedmond and number two is Sign Wolf. Okay, when we say Sedmon, no, he is one of the earliest known English poet whose story was told by the Venerable Be uh, Bede, or Bede, who is known to have rewritten biblical stories in poetic form. Okay, so si Sedmon ang isa sa mga pinaka, okay, pinaka luma or pinaka uh, naunang uh, tag dito, poet, no? Uh, English poet uh, na nagdi-discuss no, ng mga uh, biblical stories in a poetic form. No? Nakasulat siya in a poem. Next is, oops, next is Sign Wolf. No? Uh, he is the later poet, no? um, The Dream of the Rood, uh, which is the first known example of his, of his um, poetry that uses uh, visions of a dream. No? It's suggested to have been written by either Sedman or Sign Wolf. Let's proceed the discussion. Now, when we say Old English poetry, it's usually written with a line of four stressed syllables and no fixed number of unstressed syllables. It is broken by sisura, which is the break of uh, in the flow of sound. Oh, please remember that, no? Sisura, a break in the flow of sound. It is arranged in independent patterns. It is also quite common for these poems to end unrhymed. Its common form is narrative, for there was no such thing as direct poetic 
or poetry back then. So, pag sinabi natin Old English poetry, mostly, these are uh, types of poetry that does not follow okay, the normal um, poetry writing. So, baga, ito yung mga pinaka-una-una, sinauna mga klase ng tula, no? Na walang sinusunod na rhyme, walang sinusunod na pattern, um, commonly, no, narrative. If we're, we're going to take a look at the Philippine literature, no, uh, isang halimbawa nito yung pabasa, no, if you're Catholic, or if you have been a Catholic, no, uh, for sure you know uh, how pabasa works. So, this is, yung pabasa nga, lyric pa nga siya, eh, di ba, kasi may tono siya, no, nilalagyan siya ng rhyme sa dulo. But, this one, Old English Poetry, is narrative. Baga, nagkikwento siya. No? So, yun lang naman pinagkaibahan nila, pero almost the same na rin ang pabasa, yung mga type of English poetry, old English poetry. Okay, please remember that it is a line of four stressed syllable, may stressed syllable, no? apat na linya, and then no fixed number of unstressed syllables. Okay, so that is the old English poetry. So, ito ay magandang halimbawa, no? yung Beowulf. Beowulf is one of the best examples when we're talking about Old English poetry. Okay, so we're supposed to watch the entire Beowulf series, or the entire, hindi naman series, no? But the entire Beowulf introductory um, video or presentation, it's just that we might not have the enough time. That's why, mamaya, no, meron akong, oops, mamaya, meron akong ipapakita sa inyong QR code Okay, if you have your scanner with your phone, or you can use Google Lens, no, for this, uh, you just have to scan the code, and then all you need to do is to, yeah, wait, no, all you need to do is to wait for Google to finish scanning the code, para lang siyang share it, no, pag scan ka ng code, and then, bibigyan niya sa iyo yung link, pag naibigyan niya na sa iyo yung link, Okay, uh, doon yung mapapanood yung video na sinasabi ko. Kasi somehow it's 26 minutes, 26 minute long video. Okay? Now, kung titignan natin dito, oh, tingnan nyo yung, yung to, um, tula na, uh, yung, yung Beowulf. Sabi dyan, when, the, uh, when night had fallen, the, uh, the faint crept near. So, itong line pa lang na to, no? meron na tayong unfamiliar word. This is un hindi unfamiliar to sa panahon nila because it is an old English term. Okay? What else? Tingnan natin yung pattern. Near Danes done, period. Saw danger, uh, saw period. Uh, saw danger, period. Across ready fury. Uh, ito lang yung magkatunog, no? Ready fury. Sprang home, lair came all, heard ruler grief. Okay, so may kita natin na wala talaga siyang exact pattern. Okay, what else? Uh, ano pa mapansin natin? Ayan, gumagamit... <laughs> sorry. Gumagamit tayo ng... Uh, this one is translation, no? Ayan, yung nasa gilid. O kasi pinyo ala, sir, ano, hindi naman intindihan, no? It's a translation of Beowulf. Okay? So, ito, this one, was, so, uh, I just also found this from the internet. But I hope this this uh, allows us to uh, easily understand no yung Beowulf na papanoorin natin uh, papanoorin ninyo mamaya. What else? Next, modern American literature. Ito pinaka-focus natin. Pag sinabi nating Anglo-Saxon, nahati yan sa dalawa. Yung isa is the old English literature and this one is the modern American. Mamaya pag-aaral natin yung modernism. Okay, under modern American literature, no? Sa Old English, no, ang pinaka ang pinaka palasak na type of literary piece or yung pinaka literary piece na sobrang kilala, yun nga, yung Beowulf. Okay? Now, what is modern American literature? When the 19th century came, America became a global superpower and had extended its own colonies to the Pacific to the fact na nakarating sila sa Pilipinas. Not only did America double in colonization, uh, but it also explored the tenets of science, humanity, and innovation in so many people's lives. All of this, plus the hardship of the people living within and outside of the, youth, of the United States, have significantly, significantly shaped the literature that we now know, or that we know now. Okay, so, pag sinabi natin uh, American literature, nag-boom lang siya noong 19th century. Remember that. What else? Um, nung nag-boom ang uh, American literature, kasabay na nag-boom noon ang kanilang um, 
ang science, no, ang shensa, shen, ha? siyensya, no, yung humanity, innovation, etc. No? So, nung 19th century, uh, dumating ang Amerikano dito sa Pilipinas, no, uh, 1901, not mistaken, sa history, uh, nakalaya tayo sa mga Kastila noong 1989, 1901, uh, nakarating ang Amerikano, no, at napalaya nila tayo for uh, 10 years after, if not mistaken, no, or na 40 years later. Okay, basta, yun. Uh, anong naging epekto pagdating dito ng mga Amerikano? Okay, uh, when the Americans came here in the Philippines, uh, we have this, ano, nandun pa yung vigor natin para sa kalayaan, ba? And even the, what do you call this? Yung ating mga, uh, mga national heroes, no, they, they tend to, what? Look at America as another colonizer. Which is in fact, no, colonizer naman talaga ang US. But, what they're doing is they're helping those colonized countries, such as the Philippines, na na-colonize tayo ng, um, ng Spain. Okay? Tinutulungan nila para mag-improve. No? After noon, ano nangyari sa Pilipinas? We became an independent country. Nagkaroon tayo ng legislate, uh, legislature na maayos. No? We, here comes democracy. Uh, what else? There's a lot of things that happened or changed when the American people came here in the uh, Philippines. Nagkaroon tayo ng sasakyan or kotse, di ba? Uh, andyan na yung mga iba't ibang klaseng architectural uh, designs as well as sa literature. No? Uh, napakadami ng mga literary pieces na naiambag ng US or ng American, uh, the Americans sa atin. Okay? Now, ito yung sinasabi kong code. No? I'll be giving you one minute no? or you may uh, pause the video and then uh, scan the code using your phones or if you don't have your phone you may take a screenshot tapos punta kayo ng google uh, click nyo yung google lens tapos um, kunin nyo yung picture upload nyo yung picture dun sa google lens para ma scan nyo google yung code na ito and then it will lead you to the video but if you cannot be able to do that I'll be sending the uh, link as well sa GC. Eh, sir, ba't may code pa, no? Kasi, 21st century tayo, no? So, um, bago-bago din, makabago rin, no? Improve, improve din tayo. Okay? Pero again, if you don't have the, the opportunity or if you don't have the capacity to scan the code, uh, siguro mag na lang, mag tag dito, mag hintay na lang ng link sa um, GC para sa video. So, this uh, QR code will direct you to the video that I'm talking about, no? yung Beowulf. This is a 26-minute video, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from YouTube. Okay? And uh, what I want you to do is I want you to uh, uh, view or uh, watch the entire video kasi meron tayong activity niyan next week. No? You have to finish the activity um, according to this video. Okay? So, I hope na screenshot nyo na, na scan nyo na, okay, na direct na kayo sa video. Kung na scan nyo na agad, no, wag nyo muna ang panoorin. Okay, just finish the, uh, the lesson. Then, after nun, uh, pwede nyo na siyang panoorin all throughout. Okay? Next, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, no, pag sinabi nating um, modern American literature, uh, ang focus natin is the new criticism or the new modernism. Mag isang isang term lang yan, no? New modernism or new criticism. Now, this is this is a theory, okay, that you can use in your daily situation, especially when you're tasked to discover how things work. Without asking for anyone else's help, you may do this by mere observation and analysis. Now, sa new criticism, okay, wala na tayong uh, ibang pagbabasa yan or titingnan. Okay, all you need to do is to observe and analyze. Titingnan nyo lang, sisilipin nyo lang, babasahin nyo lang. That's it. Um, uh, magka magkakaroon na kayo or you, you will have the opportunity to um, give your own interpretation of a specific literary piece. New Criticism is a literary concept that places the emphasis on close reading of the work or the text itself, no? Kaya pag sinabi natin um, new criticism, okay, ang emphasis natin dito is close reading. Kung naalala nyo yung close reading, uh, na-discussion natin last time, or last last time, uh, 
uh, pag sinabi natin close reading, you have to read and reread the literary piece until you understand it. No? Babasahin mo siya, nang babasahin, nang babasahin, nang babasahin, until you fully understand the context and the meaning ng literary piece na yon. Okay? The rejection of all the historicism's attention to context and background is a way to look at the literary selection as to how it works. No? So, pag sinabi natin new modernism or new uh, criticism, pero ang focus natin na ito, ayan, para hindi tayo marito sa term, no? ito na lang term na gagamitin natin, new criticism. No? So, bakit new modernism? Kasi nga sa modern American uh, era to, na race, no? But the term that we need to uh, remember is this, new criticism, no? At uh, tinanggal natin yung old historicism kung saan inaaral natin yung history ng, uh, tag dito, ng tao, ng author, history or background ng ng critic, and what not, ano yung mga pinagdaanan nila in order for them to write this specific literary piece, no? We take them all away kapag sinabi natin new criticism or pag nag-focus tayo sa new criticism. Okay? We focus our attention in the context. Okay? Uh, in the context, in the literary piece itself. Na nagpa-focus tayo sa kung ano yung binabasa natin. Okay? Without uh, justifying or without understanding or analyzing the history of the author as well as the history of the critics. What else? Uh, new modernism or new criticism is the way a piece works may be discovered uh, through close focus o oh, close focus kaya sinasabi ko kanina diba yung close reading is important okay on the text and specific analysis sabi dyan rather than finding out about its author and when where and why it was written new criticism has been the most common approach to explicating literary selections in grade schools and high school English subjects no, kaya sinasabi ko sa inyo no, ang close reading is important sa new criticism bakit? In order for you to understand a specific literary piece, halimbawa yung Beowulf kanina, na gumagamit siya ng mga old English types, okay, or mga old English terminologies or uh, languages, no, hindi mo siya maintindihan. But, if you're going to read it over and over and over, no, mawas, mas maunawaan mo siya. Same thing with other literary pieces. No? Say, for example, um, uh, iba't ibang klaseng literary piece na limbawa, tula no? um, uh, at first you'll not be able to understand the meaning of, or the context of the poem but you, if you're going to read it over and over that's a time that you'll be able to understand the meaning and the context okay so uh, ano yung pinagkaiba ng historicism sa new criticism bakit ito yung pinagkumpara natin no? kasi last time ito yung um, isa sa mga Tag dito paraan, no? Para i-interpret ang isang literary piece. Isa, ito sa, isa to sa mga pinaka-gamit na gamit na paraan sa pag-interpret ng isang literary piece. And, uh, ang newest uh, criticism, ito rin ay sa mga bagong paraan, no? Uh, para mas ma-interpret natin ng maayos. So, somehow, medyo related siya, but these two literary theories examine closely how the text ideas may interrelate with its form what does the text say and how does it say? Sabi dyan, new criticism is sometimes known to be a science of literature for it looks at the technical aspects of the vocabulary that is used in the selection. Say, for example, no, uh, the author used um, past tense frequently sa kanyang literary piece. No? Why is that? No? Ano pa? Uh, say, for example, yung, yung um, author gumamit siya ng um what do you call this gumamit siya ng mga talinhagang salita no sa kanyang literary piece so why is that kaya sa kaya siya science of literature no what else the sounds imagery narrative point of view and others that are used in a literary selection so ibig sabihin um yung plot etc yung sounds na binibigay nung nung tula no, or ng isang literary piece, nakakatulong yan para sa pag-interpret natin ng, uh, ng, ng, ng literary piece, no? ng definition ng litera literary piece. What else? All these come together to determine how they affect what the text is saying. Say, for example, no, um, gumamit ng iba't ibang images yung author sa kanyang literary selection. No? 
um, with the use of those images, we can uh, easily define the definition or the meaning or the context that the author is trying to imply. No? Yan ay hindi focus ng historicism. Kasi ang focus ng historicism is the historical background of the writer or the author as well as the critic. No? Where in new criticism, ang focus niya is the language. Okay? Uh, more on technical. Ang historicism ay more on historical. Okay? So, huwag tayo malilito dyan. Ngayon, paano naman siya nag-work sa isang literary piece or sa isang literary selection? No? Paano natin siya mas madaling maunawaan? No? For example, say that you read a poem about love. No? Say, for example, um, to, uh, nagbabasa ka ng isang tula patungkol sa pag-ibig. Si New Criticism, tinitingnan niya yung tula kung paano siya sinulat. Say, for example, no, mayroon siyang 14 iambic pentameter and rhyming scheme. Okay, tinignan din niya kung Shakespearean ba yun or Petrarchan. Ano pa? And discover its goal is expressed in the subtly and unity of the text itself. Sabihin, uh, may kita natin dito na ang focus ng new criticism ay yung uh, way ng pagkakagawa or pagkakasulat ng tula. No? Chinect niya kung pen, uh, 14 iambic, iambic pentameter ba? No? Or... or Ano pa, uh, ano chinat niya yung rhyming scheme, gumagamit ba siya ng Shakespearean or Petrarchan? Uh, ano pa, gumamit ba siya ng mga, uh, tag dito, may rhyming scheme na, gumamit ba siya ng, uh, tag dito, yung, yung counts, no? yung bilang ng taludtod, or ano, taludtod, taludturan. Okay, <laughs> so ayan, uh, yung mga ganong klaseng aspeto no, sa isang tula, uh, yun ay basihan ng new criticism para mas madali niyang i-analyze yung literary piece. Sabi dyan, the meaning exists on the page itself. No? The, the, the meaning of the poem relies on the text. Okay? One good example of uh, a literary piece under new criticism or new uh, tama, new criticism is ito, Sedmon. Uh, it is the earliest known English poet uh, or he is the earliest known English poet and was also an Anglo-Saxon. He was tasked to take care of the animals of the monastery in Whitby Abbey and his most recognized poem is uh, Sedmon's Hymn which was composed after he had a dream. Later on, he became a monk and an inspirational poet. So, itong tula na to ni Sedmon is one of the uh, most famous Anglo-Saxon um, poem. Okay? So, basahin natin siya. Ito yan. Okay, Sedmon's Hymn, Modern English Version. Okay, by Sedmon, syempre. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, sabi dyan, Now, let me praise the keeper of the heaven's kingdom, the might of the creator, and his thought. Uh, the work of the father of glory, how each wonders, the eternal Lord established in the beginning. He first created for the sons of men, heaven as a roof, the holy creator, the middle earth, the keeper of mankind, the eternal Lord, afterwards made, the earth for man, the almighty Lord. So, uh, apply natin yung new criticism. Here's your task. No? Uh, as you write your name and section on the attendance uh, sa comment section, okay, you have to answer the question, what is the meaning of the uh, poem? Sedmon's hymn. Ano ang meaning ng poem na ito based on your personal understanding? No? Kung gagamitin natin yung new criticism, okay, you have to read it over and over and over in order for you to give your personal interpretation. So, I'm going to pause the video for a while or i-pause natin tong screen na to. Okay, or you may pause it yourselves and then uh, I want you to read it and analyze it yourself. No? Uh, pag meron na kayong personal interpretation, type it in the comment section um, with your name and your section, okay, sa unahan or sa, sa itaas, no? tapos yung personal interpretation nyo ng said mod, okay? Okay, so siguro na post nyo na yung video. Let's proceed. Okay, another notable author is Edgar Allan Poe. Ito naman yung sa makabagong, uh, hindi naman siya makabago kasi matanda na to or wala na si Edgar Allan Poe. No? 
Pero uh, in the modern age, 19th century, Edgar Allan Poe is one of the most notable author and the poet, as well as editor and literary critic, who was best known for his tales of mystery and macabre, or macabre, no? Uh, he was one of the earliest short story writers in America and is also credited as the inventor of the detective fiction game. So, alam ko, kilalang kilala nyo si Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, marami sa inyo ang nakabase na ng mga, mga tula or mga stories or kwento or fictional stories na gawa ni Edgar Allan Poe. No? What else? Poe is also unique for his... Uh, he was one of the few American writers who earned from writing alone though it made his life difficult financially. So, if we're going to uh, check um, what are the uh, literary piece of Edgar Allan Poe, we can uh, see a lot. Okay? So, siya yung nagsulat ng The Raven, To Helen, Annabel Lee, The Telltale Heart, no, isa sa mga babasahin ninyo, no, may QR code din ako para sa website niyan. No, the Cask of Amontillado, ito, napakaganda nito. Uh, and The Fall of the House of Usher, napakaganda rin nito. Napakaganda ng mga literary piece ni Edgar Allan Poe. No? Isa siya sa mga unang writer na kumita sa pagsusulat. Pero mas naging mahirap yung sitwasyon niya nung kumikita na siya. No? So it made his life difficult more, even more. So ito yung sinasabi sa inyo, uh, uh, babasahin natin yung The Telltale Heart. But I want you to scan the code again. If you don't have a phone, okay, to do it, you may take a screenshot of the screen and then punta kayo ng Google Lens. If you don't have Google Lens, uh, punta kayo sa uh, Google application ninyo. No, Pag-click nyo yung Google app ninyo, um, sa tabi ng microphone, di ba, sa search box, sa tabi ng microphone, meron dyang camera. No? And that is for Google Lens. Kung wala pa rin, you may search uh, Google Lens sa Play Store, you may download it, and then um, i-upload nyo tong picture na to sa Google Lens app para ma-scan niya ni Google. Pag na-scan na niya, ibigyan niya kayo ng link para sa website. Then, pag naibigyan niya yung link sa website, eh, dadirect niya kayo dun sa website. But, again, para sa iba, no, na may hirapan para dito, pero para sa madadalian, no, kasi scan lang naman yan. Kung may scanner na yung phone nyo, Okay, mas okay. Pero kung wala at nahihirapan kayo, pwede nyo naman na uh, kunin yung link sa GC. Sisend ko na lang doon. Pero, again, 21st century literature tayo. 21st century approach din tayo. Okay? So, uh, wala namang masama kung susubukan nyo ito. So, ayan. That's it for today's discussion concerning um, new uh, modernism. Ayan. Uh, concerning Anglo-Saxon literature. I hope that you've learned something today. Sir, bakit ganun? Sabi nyo, sobrang haba ng mga discussion. Yes. Mahabang discussion kung papanoorin natin yung mga videos as well as kung magkakaroon tayo ng actual interaction. So, after nito, um, sundan nyo yung video patungkol sa um, European literature. Okay? Same date will be uploaded. Okay? Again, yung attendance niyo sa comment section, all you need to do is to type your name, your section, and your answer doon sa tanong kanina. What is the meaning uh, of the poem, Sedmon's hymn, him, according to your own personal interpretation? Yung iba noon, nakaraan, may kinopya sa Google, halatang halata. No? So, huwag nyo nang tularan kasi matik zero yon. Okay? Uh, huwag din kayong kukopya ng sagot ng classmates ninyo, no? Yung iba, hindi kinokopya lahat, no? Yung kalahati lang, or yung one-fourth lang. No? Kita pa din, halata pa din kayo. Okay? So, please, no? Make your own personal task, or your personal interpretation. Okay? I do hope that you've learned something today's discussion. Thank you very much, um, grade 11 students. Um, ano pa ba? So, ayun lang. Continue to stay safe, take care, God bless you, and, um, Please take, make sure to review and re-review re the lessons and the discussion. Okay? So, ay ito, meron pala akong uh, concluding statement concerning uh, Anglo-Saxon literature. Ito, nice. Gawa to kanina. Sabi dyan, Anglo-American literature is one of the oldest literature recorded in history. It is because that Anglo-Saxons were some of the first people who wrote English, no? or Old English. 
na para sa kalaman ng lahat, no, ang Anglo-Saxon, uh, sila ang naka-inventor, nakagawa na, or unang gumamit ng English or Old English. No? So, pamana nila yan sa atin. This gave birth to two kinds of literature back then, the epic pagan poems and the Christian literature. Now, from here, modern American literature came about and nowadays the topics are more diverse due to the historical and cultural shifts in recent years. No? Because of so many years that have passed no? and uh, a lot of things going on sa, sa US and sa, sa ibang part no? ng mga uh, Anglo-Saxon countries, no? nagkaroon ng diversity with regards to their literature. What else? Uh, more than this, American literature has affected Filipinos because they came to colonize the country more than 200 years ago. Their literature shows m how much of their culture the Filipinos have assimilated as their own, including their 